Good morning and welcome to Worship with Basingstoke Salvation Army this morning. We're so glad that you're able to be with us as we continue to be separated by the coronavirus lockdown and unable to gather in worship together in our hall. But we're able to gather uh, scattered online uh, together and to continue to think about life beyond Easter. What does life beyond Easter look like? And this morning we're going to listen to some words of comfort and peace from Jesus Christ himself and thinking about our heart health. How is your heart this morning? It might be that you want to make a comment about that in the chat as we think about this theme. But we're going to start with a great song from our founder William Booth, O God of burning cleansing flame, send the fire. Thinking about asking Jesus Christ to send the fire of his Holy Spirit into our hearts to make them healthy. And so in the fourth verse we're going to sing, to make our weak hearts strong and brave, send the fire, to live a dying world to save, send the fire, O see us on thy altar lay our lives are all this very day to crown the offering now we pray send the fire today join with us as we sing together O god of burning cleansing flame What a great song to make our weak hearts strong and brave send the fire i pray that that's your prayer this morning asking god to fill you so fill you with his holy spirit uh, as you continue to live and to work for him in the days to come we're going to pray in a few moments but we want to remember those in our core family especially who need our prayers at this time we think of elaine godfrey we think of brian sharp Brian Hooper. We want to pray this morning for Nikki's father, Brian, as he continues his chemotherapy. We also want to bring before God Stan and Val and Mark as they continue to mourn the loss of Jean. We also think of Nick. We think of the staff and residents at St Thomas's as they continue to look after Derek and Richard and other residents in that um, situation. And we want to remember Ebby and Sue as they continue to work on the front line uh, around COVID-19 and the coronavirus. 
at Basingstoke Hospital. We also want to remember Brenda King's father who had a fall this week and to ask for healing for him and for others in our prayers at this time. Let's pray together. Father God, we come to you this morning in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of the current lockdown, on a day when we're expecting the government to perhaps tell us a little bit more of what happens next, but where our hearts may well be in turmoil because of the way the world is at the moment. We come in prayer, even though our hearts might be fearful of the current situation and what happens next. We ask you to bring your peace. We ask you to bring your comfort. We pray that the words of Jesus that we'll hear later on will just quieten our hearts down. That we will invite you into our lives and into our hearts to ensure that our hearts are healthy. We want to bring to you at this moment in time those people that we've mentioned and others too who need our prayers and need your power and your strength and your comfort in their lives just at this moment. May they understand that we are praying for them at this time and that you are there for them, you are for them and you want to work for them in the days to come in whatever ways that they need. Lord, we ask that you will make our weak hearts strong and brave as we live for you, as we seek to serve you in whatever ways that we can do that at the moment. Maybe we're confined to our homes and the, the way that we can serve you is only to pick up the phone or to send a text or an email or a card or something just to contact someone who might not have contact otherwise. We pray for those who are out on the front line. We've remembered Ebby and Sue, but I also want to bring to you this morning those volunteers who are picking up prescriptions and doing shopping and taking food parcels as part of our community hub. May you bless them. May you give them the right words to say. May you protect them as they go about your business. We pray too for the hot food that's being provided uh, for the needy families of Kings Furlong Junior School. And we just ask that you would be over that process too. We thank you for Red Radish and their willingness to provide this food uh, for us to give out. And we just pray that those families will know something of your love because of the work that we're doing on their behalf. We pray all these prayers together and I invite you to bring these prayers together in the family prayer. Just say it wherever you are at this time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
O oh, love, forever claim my eyes, thy beauty be my chosen prize. I cast my load on timeless grace, that my free soul may run the race. It may be that you feel that your soul is overloaded this morning. We have an opportunity in worship to cast our load on Jesus Christ, to hand it over to him. I pray that we take that opportunity this morning. But right now, it's time for you to learn probably a new song to you. It's from Hillsong's Kids. It's called One Way. It's the opportunity for you to get up off your sofa and to try some actions. If you don't know the song, don't worry. Try and learn the actions as best as you can. And uh, if you can, sing along to, uh, as the kids remind us, One Way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. Enjoy One Way. 
Today's dance along is to the classic song One Way by Hillsong Kids. Now, if you'd like to download this tutorial along with other worship videos, go ahead and check out my Patreon page at the description below. Come on, now let's have some fun. <laughs> verses 1 to 14 Jesus the way to the Father don't let your hearts be troubled trust in the Lord and trust also in me there is more than enough room in my father's home if this were not so would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you when everything is ready I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I am going no, we don't know, Lord Thomas said. We can have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. 
from now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still do not know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work that you have seen me do. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in the name, and I will do it. Amen. Thank you to Paula for sharing those words this morning. We're going to sing again, this time a song of testimony, an opportunity to remind ourselves and perhaps other people too uh, the difference that Jesus makes when he comes into our hearts. Since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy, O oh my soul, like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. Enjoy singing this song of testimony. Hello everyone, here are the announcements for the activities over the next few days. Immediately after this service, you're invited to join us for a virtual coffee fellowship. At 3.30 this afternoon will be the virtual Sunday school, and then at 8 o'clock this evening, our virtual youth fellowship. On Wednesday at 11.30, there will be our weekly virtual coffee stop. And the activity on Thursday evening this week, just after 8 o'clock, after the clap for NHS, is the small group study on Zoom again, and this will be exploring through the second session, Holiness Unwrapped. That takes us to next Sunday, when we'll again be live streaming our worship at 11 o'clock. Uh, thinking again beyond Easter, this week the title will be Pursuit of Joy and Happiness. And an event uh, a little way in the future, indeed a long way in the future, but something to look forward to is that on Saturday the 6th of March 2021, we're pleased to announce that we will be having a concert by the Household Troops Band. So that is definitely something to look forward to. That's Saturday the 6th of March 2021. We give thanks to God for the life and service of Jean Bennett. We continue to pray for Stan uh, and, Val's and Stan's daughter Val. 
Gene was promoted to glory from Basingstoke Hospital, and it has been confirmed that there will be a direct cremation. That will mean there will be no service at the crematorium, and the date is yet to be confirmed. However, the family have penciled in, subject to the level of restrictions in place at the time, the afternoon of Thursday, the 3rd of September 2020, which is the date of Jean's birthday, for a celebration of her, of her life in a service at the hall. We continue to ask for your prayers for a number of our friends, particularly Elaine Godfrey, uh, the three Bryans, Brian Sharp, Brian Hooper, and Nikki Bly's father, Brian, Nick Turrell, Stan Bennett and the family following the promotion to glory of Jean, and the staff and residents of St. Thomas's Care Home, especially Derek Hasking and Richard Rugman and the families. We continue to pray for all who are working in the health service at the moment, in coping with the COVID-19 emergency, but of course, especially for Ebby and Sue from our own core family, who we also congratulate on the occasion of their silver wedding anniversary, which they celebrated earlier this week. May God bless you. Our next song reminds us that it's okay to have doubts, to have questions. It's okay that sometimes as Christians our hearts feel 
troubled, particularly when we're in a time of crisis like this. But what we need when our hearts feel like that is something, or in fact someone, that we can trust. And the Wren Collective remind us in this song that the someone that we can trust is our lighthouse, Jesus Christ. Let's sing My Lighthouse together. Well, hello church. We count it a great privilege to be with you, to worship with you um, and your church. I'm just going to read from John chapter 4, um, 23. Jesus said, But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For their Father is seeking such people to worship him. You know, it came after just a moment when the Samaritan woman said, But don't you Jews say you're meant to worship in the temple? Jesus was saying, it doesn't matter where you worship from, it matters about the state of your heart. That's where worship comes from. That's what the Father's looking for. So today, whether you're in a living room, (laughs) whether you're outside, no matter where you are, we just love the fact that we can worship together. We don't need to be in a church building. We are the church. So let's just choose to worship God despite our circumstances. You know, Jesus didn't say to worship in feelings and circumstance but he said in spirit and in truth. So let's sing together. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you home. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to show Doubts in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, in the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will. Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Oh, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea Sing this faithfulness My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness I will find you Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse I will trust the promise to show
safe to show up Safe to show up Now, I understand this is a risky question to ask as the morning ticks on and we head towards lunchtime. It might be that your stomach is already growling and so this isn't going to make it any better. But here goes. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Perhaps you have a favourite breakfast cereal. Kellogg's Frosties were always my favourite. Other brands are of course available. Maybe you're a toaster marmalade person. Or did you push the boat out this morning and have bacon? This morning I had boiled eggs and toast, which is a bit of a Sunday morning treat these days. And what about your drink? Are you a black coffee person like me, or is tea or fruit juice more your thing in the morning? I ask this because research shows that mum's adage that breakfast is the most important meal of the day has more than a grain of truth in it. According to research done by the Mayo Clinic, breakfast really is the most important meal of the day, at least when it comes to the health of your heart. Over 20 years, doctors tracked the breakfast habits and health data of some 2,100 individuals. The goal of the study was to determine the positive or negative health effects of skipping breakfast. Those who grew up in homes where breakfast was skipped and carried out on into later life showed significantly higher levels of heart-wrenching health statistics. Their waistlines were bigger, their cholesterol was higher, their insulin levels were just not right. In other words, their, their hearts were sick. And so now many doctors who've studied that report recommend waking up and eating some kind, in fact almost any kind, of breakfast as an essential step in avoiding serious heart trouble. And you know, it might not just be physical heart health that breakfast affects either. In 2010, three researchers from America and Israel decided to test the legal adage that justice equals what the judge ate for breakfast. The research team tracked the rulings of eight judges in over 1,100 parole board hearings over 10 months, and the results led them to the following conclusion. The chances of a prisoner being granted parole depended on the time of day that the judge heard the case. Prisoners' odds for getting their parole granted started high in the morning right after breakfast. About 65% of the prisoners were granted parole then. But for the next few hours, the chances of getting a favourable parole hearing started to plummet. Prisoners' chances of parole shot back up to 65% at two very distinct times. Right after the judge's mid-morning snack, and again after lunch. Breakfast can clearly affect our minds and our souls too. Jesus was concerned about our heart health. In our passage this morning, Jesus is speaking to his disciples at the last supper that they have together. His followers, of course, had good reason to be troubled at this stage. Having spent a few days celebrating the exciting events of Palm Sunday, they'd learned that evening that one of them was to betray Jesus, and another one, having expressed very full and passionate loyalty to Jesus, was in fact going to deny his master three times. At that moment, their world must have been crashing around them. Their hopes must have been dashed. And Jesus says this to them. You'll find it in verse 1 of our passage. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Jesus was calling his followers at that moment to a very deeper level of trust. A level of trust that corresponded with the crisis that they were about to find themselves in. His words in verse 1 carry the sense of a firm and resolute command, although knowing Jesus as we do, I'm sure that this command was given gently. The Greek word that John uses for troubled is a picturesque one. It's literally, don't let your hearts shudder. It's the same word that John uses to describe Jesus' reaction as Judas went astray. It's a very strong word. What Jesus is saying to his disciples in this moment is, it may look like your world is falling apart. It may look like all is lost. You may feel as if the darkness is going to engulf you. But don't let your hearts be troubled. Now that's easy to say, but how do we actually do this? Jesus says, trust in God and trust also in me. 
the way to a healthy heart is to believe in God and to believe in Jesus. That's it. If you want a healthy heart, keep believing in God. Keep believing in Jesus. You only have to keep your mind on God and who he is, his sovereignty, his his control over the universe, his ever-presence, and our hearts would not be as troubled as they are. So what should Jesus be trusted for? Well, the initial reason is that he says he will prepare rooms for his followers in his eternal kingdom and then return in order to escort his followers to these rooms. These words are, of course, very familiar to many of us. They're highlighted in many of our Bibles. I've heard them dozens of times in funeral services. In fact, only a couple of weeks ago, Major Ron used them during Peter's funeral service. Jesus' words bring us the promised hope of heaven, the end of our journey, and have a peaceful eternity with the Father and the Son in mind. But that's not all Jesus promises in these verses. Jesus goes on to explain his going away and coming again by saying in verse 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Here Jesus explains his words in a way that suggests not so much about travelling to heaven than about entering into a relationship with God through Christ right now at this very moment. The destination that Jesus appears to have in mind is a relationship with his Father right now. And the pathway towards that relationship is Jesus himself. Notice that the way that Jesus talks about isn't his teachings or his principles or his moral values. The way is Jesus the person. The way is a relationship As Jesus goes on to explain later in chapter 14, the way is about Jesus living in you through his Holy Spirit. That's the key to a healthy heart. In this time of crisis, does it feel as if your heart is troubled? If it does, then are you feasting on Christ? If you're not consuming him, then it's likely the anxieties of life will consume you instead. If you're starving for a sense of direction or craving some lasting peace, that can only come from standing on Jesus' promises. Watching 24-hour news will not nourish you. If you believe the talking heads will give you lasting wisdom, then at some stage your word will crumble. Our troubled hearts need to be fed with Christ. We anchor our hearts in the hope that he gives. We root ourselves in the promise that one day he will return to complete his work. To travel to the Father on the way of Jesus requires faith, and that faith comes from discerning God's voice voice through his word. What you are feeding your body makes a difference. That's why doctors are keen for you to have a good breakfast. If you neglect what you eat, then your heart will not be healthy. The same is true of your heart of faith. Your heart of faith must be fed well if you want it to be strong and healthy. Jesus tells us that the key to heart health as one of his followers is to trust in him and to feast on his words. If you find your heart is troubled at the moment, then ask yourself how much time you're spending in God's word. Now, I ask you this not to make you feel guilty, not to make you feel as if you're a bad person or a bad Christian or you've somehow got to cram more time. I ask you because I know that God's word holds the peace and the comfort that you crave. The second answer to your troubled heart is that Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit will come not just to walk alongside you, but to actually be inside you. He makes his home in you. He resides within you. If you're listening to this message today and thinking you're all alone and that no one cares, then Jesus promises that whilst you may feel this way, it's not true. You are never alone. Even when you do not feel Christ's presence, he is within you. You may feel like the whole world is caving in today, but the Holy Spirit's presence is comfort. He brings you the promise that Jesus does not leave you as an orphan. He comes to heal and to minister his grace. All you have to do for a healthy heart is to invite the Holy Spirit in. If your mum was right about breakfast being the most important meal of the day, then Jesus is certainly right that the answer to a troubled heart is to trust in him. So will you invite him in this morning? You may have done this many times before, or you might be doing it for the first time. But it's what we all need today, 
me included. So join with me and the poet who wrote the very simple chorus. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. It's that simple. Take the first step to a healthy heart by praying these words of invitation as you listen to the beautiful melody written for them. Our final song together is a great song from General John Gowans and I have to admit I cannot help but think of Bob whenever I announce this song because the song is Who Is It Tells Me What To Do and of course he would always shout out Molly but that's not actually the answer at least not as far as this song is concerned. Who Is It Tells Me What To Do? That's the spirit the spirit of the living God living in me and uh, it reminds us of the difference that comes into our life when we allow the Holy Spirit to control our lives and to control our hearts. And so in the third verse we sing, who is it shows me what to be and leads me to that goal? Who is it that claims the heart of me and wants to take control? Who is it calls to holiness of body, mind and soul? That's the Spirit. That's the Spirit of the Lord in me. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord is in you as we conclude our time of worship together today. Let's sing together, who is it tells me what to do.
a final prayer. May God bless you, guide you and direct you. May God bless you, give you strength and the assurance of his love. May God bless you and fill your life with his presence, today and always. Amen. Have a great week. Trust in God. Trust in Jesus Christ. And keep going.